guests at a virtual event today. CEO Tim Cook also introduced three new Macs powered by those Apple chips. It's amazing to think that this is our third major event in just the past two months. In the midst of enormous challenges this year, our teams have remained focused and they haven't stopped innovating. We're on an unbelievable pace of new product releases, delivering more new products this fall than ever before. All right, let's bring in our tech editor, Dan Howley, who has been watching the virtual event. He joins us now. Uh, so Dan, anything in particular, either uh, surprise and or impress you from what you saw so far today? I think one of the surprises was the fact that we actually got a new Mac Mini. That was something that we weren't really expecting to see out of this event. But you know, we were expecting this ARM-based processor from Apple. Uh, it is supposedly faster uh, than what Intel is offering in the same range. Uh, they do say that it has uh, two times performance of the leading PC processors. Uh, that obviously would mean uh, Intel. They also say that the, uh, the new computers that these are going into are going to be a lot faster. So uh, as, let's go over the chip real quick. Uh, it's called the M1, obviously. Uh, they're saying it offers, as I said, two times that performance. It's a five nanometer chip. That's something that Intel, frankly, can't do right now. Uh, that basically means uh, the distance between the, uh, the transistors and really uh, what you're getting out of uh, a five nanometer chip means more power efficiency uh, less having to deal with heat, uh, and that is really what can build up a bottleneck in some of these processors. So Intel right now is stuck on a 10 nanometer process. They say they're going to have a 7 nanometer chip coming out uh, in the future, but that and their uh, desktop level 10 nanometer chips have been delayed. Now, Apple has just said, forget that, we're going to skip the 10 and the 7, and we're going to go right to 5. So this is ahead of what we're seeing out of AMD as well, which is already eating Intel's lunch as far as capabilities go. So a huge upgrade there. Uh, they're also uh, going to be in the new MacBook Air uh, and the MacBook 13-inch Pro, uh, as well as the Mac Mini. So for the MacBook Air, that means three times faster performance, uh, they say, Apple, uh, than the best-selling Windows PC in its class. Uh, as far as battery life, uh, you're looking at up to 15 hours of wireless web browsing, 16 hours of video playback, uh, they say that that's some of the best you'll get out of an Air uh, yet. As far as the CPU and GPU, uh, those are going to be much faster for the Mac, and it'll get two times faster solid-state drive. So we're looking at a much faster uh, Air here. The big thing is there's no fan inside of this thing. So rather than annoying whine that you would get when you would start to watch too many videos uh, or browse too many different websites, you're not going to have that with this at all. Uh, and that's because of the, the efficiency of these new processors. Uh, as for the Pro, it's also using the M1 chip. Uh, that is going to be uh, 2.8 times faster as far as CPU performance and five times faster as far as GPU performance. So we're looking at some big jumps here uh, as far as the capabilities of these Macs go. Uh, they're also going to be able to do things uh, like run 8K video uh, playback. Uh, and as far as the battery life goes on the Pro, Apple says that it's the best battery they've ever put in a Mac uh, with 17 hours of wireless web browsing and 20 hours of video playback. So that's absolutely monstrous for the Pro. And then for the Mini, they say that it's going to offer uh, six times the graphics capabilities and that despite the fact that it's a tenth the size of the leading Windows desktop on the market, uh, it's five times uh, faster as far as performance goes. So really some big claims here coming out of Apple today with these new chips, uh, but that five nanometer process is really something incredible. Uh, I think as far as uh, you know, what we're expecting for when you get the computers themselves, that will really be shown in Apple's new OS, Mac OS Big Sur. They announced that back at WWDC in June, uh, but we, what we got out of the event today was news that you know, we're going to see universal apps uh, that are able to run on both Intel uh, and M1-based machines. Uh, so that means that you know, we won't have any issues where, oh, you can't run this because uh, you have an M1 chip, or you can't run this because you don't have an M1 chip, and you would have an older Mac. Uh, there's also going to be something called Rosetta 2. That was announced uh, at WWDC in June. That's going to allow uh, for Intel-based apps to be translated to these new M1 chips so that they'll be able to run on these systems. Uh, and then also that iOS and iPad OS apps will be coming to these Macs uh, with M1 chips. So uh, it's going to be a big change up. And this is something we've seen throughout 
uh, the last couple of years with Apple, where it's been more of a transition uh, of from let's take the you know millions of apps that we have in iOS and iPad OS and try to bring them in to Mac OS. And now with these chips, that is finally possible. So we'll see what that means for the future uh, of these desktops and laptops. But look, from what they're saying, it seems really impressive. As for Intel, they're kind of left there uh, hanging. That they're not going to have access. Uh, to Apple after 2022. That's when Apple says that they'll complete that transition. Uh, and as far as uh, money, they're leaving $2.9 billion a year on the table uh, that Apple would have been usually giving them. That's how much Apple paid in 2019 for their processor. So all in all, this seems to be a win for Apple. We'll just have to make sure that these claims are backed up when we get our hands on the devices themselves. Wow, that's a, that's a lot to take in, and they, they certainly sound impressive. Uh, these chips sound really fast. The great news there on batteries. So with all that power, with all that speed, what are we going to be paying for these? Do we know price points yet? And aren't they going to be going on pre-order very soon? Because I would imagine Apple wants these in people's hands in time for the holidays. Yeah, you can start pre-ordering them right now, actually. They'll be available next week. Uh, the Air itself will be $9.99. Uh, the Pro, the MacBook Pro, uh, that's the 13-inch model. That'll be $12.99. Uh, and then the Mini will be $6.99. So, you know, pricing doesn't seem to be changing very much for these machines. The Air is $9.99 right now. It's going to stay $9.99. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to want to, you know, potentially wait for this generation uh, for the reviews to come out before they put money down on them. Just because if you are a person who's using, for instance, a Pro, you want to make sure that you have the power and capabilities that you need to do things like edit heavy duty video or photos or things along those lines, uh, compiling code. I think if you're going to be a pro user, you might wait before pre-ordering. But look, if it can live up to what Apple's promising, these will be some seriously impressive systems. 